What's up, Deaners? I hope you all had a great start to the new year, and I want to thank you all for the support you've given me through this last year. If you haven't subscribed yet, it's not too late to start now. It's completely free, you help my channel grow, and I'm sure if you clicked on this video, you'll want to see some of my other content. I upload weekly guides for Ghosts of Tabor, as well as weekly gameplay videos and live streams. I would really appreciate the support in growing my channel. In this video, I will be giving you all of my go-to trader and player leveling tips and tricks. I have had several people come to me asking how to level up traders and your character quickly, so I hope that this video will help you do both. Firstly, I want to help you understand how you gain player experience. Experience is accrued in raid by doing basically anything. You gain XP for player kills, eating, drinking, healing, looting, and just traveling around the map and extracting. Now we should break down these values so we know exactly how much you can expect to gain and what is the most viable way to gain XP reliably. Eating, drinking, and healing all gain you 3 XP per unit you increase those levels by. You can also gain XP just by simply looting. There are six categories for items you can loot and you gain different XP depending on how rare the item is. A level one item will give you 120 XP. Some examples of these are low level weapon magazines, cheaper attachments, and common junk. A level two item will give you 240 XP. This is usually uncommon junk and mid range attachments. Level three items run at 360 XP. This is rare junk, knives, and mid level weapon magazines. Level 4 items are worth 480 XP, this is high level weapon magazines, legendary junk, and electronic wallets. Level 5 items are high end attachments, car batteries, those special items. And level 6 is the streamer items, those 20k items such as the skull, viper sauce, strategic cheese, and the ranger handbook all go for 720 XP per. Kills get you XP as well, a scav kill will gain 300 XP. A player kill will gain 525 XP. There's also a bonus for headshotting those kills. This is added on to the original kill XP. So if you kill a scav, you get 300 XP for killing them and the headshot XP, which is 360 on top of that. For a player headshot stacked on top of 525, you also gain 630 XP for headshots. Long shots are 300 XP and that stacks on top of the kill. A Phoenix Guard kill, such as Kurtek's goons or Kurtek himself, is 750 XP. There's also kill streaks factored in. If you don't get a single kill in a raid, you lose 30 XP. This does not affect your actual out of raid XP, it just reduces the amount of XP you gained that raid by 30 XP, but can't actually subtract from your earned XP. One kill gains you zero XP. It's not a kill streak, it's just one kill. Two kills is 60 XP. 3 kills, 150, 4 kills, 270, and the pattern continues like this. The formula for it is basically just kills times 30 XP plus the previous amount. You also gain XP by surviving based on how much distance you traveled, or so I think. I haven't been able to quite nail this one down. It's not based on raid time because that's too inconsistent, so I believe it is based on how much traveling you do in a raid. Uh, I've noticed that it's about 1 to 3 XP per second on average for me. So, you know, the more time you spend running around in a raid, the more XP you're going to get, obviously. Um, but you can kind of count on between 1 and 3 XP per second. So to gain player levels, the best strategy is to get a lot of kills. AI or player, it doesn't matter. You just need a lot to get the kill streak bonus. You can run around the map a bunch, and you need to loot a lot. Those three things account for the vast majority of your XP in a given raid. This will be useful for leveling up your character to unlock bunker upgrades as well as other player level locked items in the future such as the flea market. Now on to trader levels. Trader levels are extremely important and arguably more important than your player levels in Ghost of Tabor because they are your only reliable source for getting the gear you need. To level up a trader you need to satisfy two criteria. Trader reputation and cash flow. Cash flow just represents the amount of money spent at a trader as well as the value of items sold to that trader. Reputation is gained by doing the trader's quests. When leveling traders, it's best to narrow down one or two traders to level at a time. 
I'm going to be honest with you, you only need to level three of the traders for the whole game, the rest do not even matter. The three traders you want to level up are, in no particular order, Spectre, Minty Tactical, and Jiri's Euromart. Spectre and Minty are obvious because they are necessary for weapons and gear, Jiri is the only outlier. Jiri has recently replaced Shiro Ammunition as my third trader because he offers the same necessary ammo crafting supplies as well as bunker supplies such as gas, water filter, and Takistan sun seeds, as well as having the same stuff as the Tabor Rehabilitation Hospital, NRS's bandages and food. I wouldn't be surprised if they rework Jiri in the future because he's really OP right now and honestly the best trader in the game, and that's why I prioritize getting him to level 3 at the start of a wipe. I have Nuclear Knight, so I just have everyone at level 2 at the start, but even if all started at level 1, I'd still do Jiri to level 3 first. I mainly do this for access to AP powder. Having guns and gear don't help if you're shooting peas at people, so I want AP and I'll put it in an SKS and kill Kurtek for all the guns I could ever need. Then I prioritize Spectre to get access to better guns, and lastly, Minty. Minty is my lowest priority out of the three because most of his stuff is fairly easy to get from other players or find and raid, other than the NVGs, which is why he is my late wipe grind because I'm getting NVGs for when I'm fully kitted. Now that you know the order in which I level up traders, allow me to show you the methods I use and which missions are best. With all the missions the traders offer, there are two classifications I have come up with, passive and active missions. Passive missions are the ones you can accept and play the game normally, and you'll eventually complete them. They're usually only a thousand XP though. Active missions are the missions you have to complete within a certain number of lives or raids. When you equip these missions, you have a goal in your mind of what you need to complete in a raid to have a chance at succeeding the mission. These are by far the most lucrative missions, as they range from 3,000 XP to over 30,000. A good mix of active and passive missions is what I find to be the best method to level up traders. That way, even if you fail the active portion, you will still have progressed some in the passive. Another good strategy is to accept two tasks that are extremely similar. For instance, Minty and Jiri both have a complete 5 raids task. Jiri also has a complete 10 raids task. All three of these tasks can be done simultaneously. Spectre and Minty have similar tasks. Minty's being kill 5 players in 3 raids, and Spectre's being kill 5 players without dying 3 times. And this Phoenix kill quest. Minty's being kill 15 Phoenix in 3 raids, and Spectre's being kill 25 Phoenix in 5 raids with SMG. It's a good idea to do this because then you are progressing multiple tasks at once without any extra effort. When you go to level up these three traders, here are my favorite tasks for each one, starting with Jiri. My favorite passive is complete 5 raids, that's 1000 XP. Another passive, complete 10 raids, 2000 XP. An active, complete 5 raids without dying, 10,500 XP. And active, kill 7 players with a Makarov, 31,500 XP. Now this one's almost impossible, but it's an amazing one to get because of the XP reward. Silo would probably be the best map for this, and you just go full kit with a ton of spare mags. And now moving on to Spectre, we have kill 15 Phoenix with Assault Rifle for 1200 XP. Kill 25 players, that's 6300 XP. And kill 10 players with AR, that's 2500 XP. My favorite active ones for Spectre are kill 5 players in 3 lives, 4800 XP. Kill 15 players in 5 raids, 18,500 XP. That's an average of 3 players per raid. Island is your best bet if you rush spawns or research. And last active, kill 25 Phoenix with SMG in 5 raids. That's 8,400 XP, which is easy with an SMG and a drum on silo. You'll just want to hang around on the map until the Phoenix respawn at least once. And for Minty, my favorite passive are kill 12 Phoenix, that's 1,000 XP, and complete 5 raids for 1,000 XP. And for active, there's kill 5 players in 3 raids, 4,500 XP, and kill 10 players in 7 lives, that's 5,700 XP, but it's more forgiving because you get 7 lives instead of raids. And last but not least, kill 15 Phoenix in 3 raids, 5,000 XP. This one's easy, you just have to wait for the Phoenix respawn. You'll have to have food and water so you can stay in the raid longer and farm those easy AI kills. It's important to put missions together that make the most sense. Stack 5 Phoenix kill missions and just farm AI for a raid or two and you'll be sitting pretty good. 
I see too often people focusing just one trader and losing out on free XP they would gain if they had similar missions stacked on each other. As this video comes to an end, I'd like to note that grinding trader levels doesn't really seem fun, but you can make it fun by giving your raids an objective and making you play different. I know when I'm grinding traders, I have a lot of fun chasing down players and rushing player spawn points. I hope this guide is useful to you as you level up traders and your player. If you stayed this long, please consider subscribing. And before you go, I want to let you all know that you should wait to act on this information because rumor has it, the game will be wiping in February and I wouldn't want you all to spend all your time leveling traders in this late wipe. I've been Dino and if you're still watching, let me get a wipe this in the comments. Thanks for watching.